sorry about the lighting. We're sitting in the back of my Forerunner right now where I got all this stuff spread out. But as you can see, there's not much to it. Obviously, I like to travel pretty light if I'm only going out for a day or overnight. So hopefully you guys will find this pretty interesting and let's get into it. The pack we're going to be carrying most of this stuff in is this Oakley Miltac Link Pack 2.0. I do have a review over this, so go check it out. Plenty of molly all over the front. I do have a couple of admin pouches I keep typically keep on here. But overall, total weight on this guy is probably no more than 15, 20 pounds. So definitely a great little option. This thing has literally been all over the world with me. I'm definitely a big fan of this bag. You got like moisture wicking stuff on the back. Soft shell, no external skeleton or whatever. Pretty good construction, man. Uh, cannot complain there one bit. So yeah. Things if you're gonna be spending overnight or even just outdoor survival in general is shelter. I'm a big hammock guy. I like hammocks a lot. Um, I don't camp as much as I should or as much as I used to, but uh, one I've been using lately, it's a pretty inexpensive hammock. It's just a single grand trunk hammock. It's pretty cool, holds up pretty well. I don't have any complaints with it yet. I do have a review on it, so go check that out if you want to see it. Now, say I forget that or it gets torn or whatever, I do have this little Ozark Trail emergency reflective tent. This is just a absolute, you know, last ditch thing if I forget something that I uh, should have remembered. But uh, at the very least, I can use it to signal somebody in an emergency situation. Uh, use it like a space blanket almost, something like that. Next up is water purification. Now, uh, obviously I'll carry my Nalgene or some type of water bottle on me wherever I go. If you don't, you should. Even if it's just you know a couple of 16 ounce water bottles, carry something, some way to hydrate yourself. Um, Again, I live in Southern California, so besides the ocean and a couple of rivers here and there, there are not many standing water options. That's few and far between, right? It's not like back in Missouri where there's a creek every, you know, 600 feet or whatever. Um, what I've been using lately is the Grail Gravity Water Purifier. It is a very interesting design, essentially. You just put your water in this thing and you push it through this gravity press. You know, it takes take the cap off first, I guess. You just push it down and it gets all, or at least most of the stuff that would hurt you out of the water. So it's definitely an interesting little thing. I will be making a review on this. I'm doing a camping trip with my family, I believe. Oh gosh, in a couple months. So definitely stay tuned to that. And then also as a backup, say this gets cracked, it you know, goes off in a wild blue yonder. I do have some portable aqua tabs. Now this stuff is tried and true. You can pick this up for like 10 or 12 bucks at the store, I'm pretty sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but definitely a great way to purify water on the go if you have no other means of doing two blades. Uh, I typically will have a belt knife on me regardless, but I like to keep one staged in the pack no matter what. Uh, the knife I'm using for that right now is the Brisa Enzo Hiker 95. I've done a review on this. It's essentially a better quality Mora, in my opinion. A very good blade. Nice scandy grind on it. Nothing to complain there. Yeah, interesting little knife. Comes in this nice little leather sheath. Dangler. And it comes in right around 50, 60 bucks. So definitely not a bad option. Definitely a great little companion. Any blade you need to have a way to sharpen it out in the field. Just a standard work sharp sharpener. Nothing too crazy, nothing extreme. Pick this up for like literally 15 bucks. Going with that, um, again, I live in Southern California. There's not much in the way of uh, wood chopping that would need to be done. But in the case that there was, say I'm in a California birch grove and I have the ability to cut down some wood, obviously check your local regs and whatever. I do have this East Wing. I think this is a 24 inch handle model. Uh, very good hatchet, I mean, full steel construction. I will say coming out of the box though, these things are extremely dull. So it's gonna take some work. Uh, I would recommend a belt sander to get this edge up to snuff. That way you're not having to worry about that when you go out having an adventure. Basic nylon sheath, nothing to write home about. But yeah, overall pretty good. On medical real quick. So again, this isn't just a basic day pack, overnight pack at the very most, but still it is very, very important to carry some way, shape, or form of like a little IFAC individual first aid kit. Uh, and this is just one, like a pre-made one I picked up from the store. Odds and ends for, you know, boo-boos, little scratches and stuff like that. 
I also carry with me a SWAT T tourniquet for those big lacerations. Say, I God forbid you're trying to cut down a tree and you miss and you hit your leg and now you're worrying about bleeding out. Obviously get medical training, know what you're doing if you're gonna use one of these, but these are a lifesaver uh, in the right situation. Having just enough medical from anything from a basic scrape to a stab wound, God forbid, is very important in my opinion. It gets overlooked a lot. Definitely do. comes to the ability to start a fire again, Southern California has some pretty tight restrictions on when and where you can do that. Obviously only in authorized places, but for the rest of the country where it's not on fire most of the year, uh, this would do just fine. I like to have three different ways if I can help it. Now, we all love to have a good flint and steel. I've got a little finish made one right here. I don't know who makes this. UCO or UOO? Correct me in the comments, guys. I'm not exactly sure, but I've used this one. Or not this exact one, this is a newer one, but I've used this same model before and I don't have any complaints with it whatsoever. Now going with that, stormproof matches. These things are an absolute lifesaver. You bundle like three or four of these together and throw a lit one in there and you're gonna get yourself a fire started in no time. Also, this is 21st century. I know we like to be all cool with foot and steel, but lighters are pretty nifty. Been around for a while. I definitely recommend putting one in your pack so you're not freezing to death without a fire because water purification. But what about food? Typically I'll just bring like some beef jerky or something if I'm only gonna be out for a few hours, but I like to have the capability. Uh, Mountain House are very good. They're probably some of the best freeze dried food in my opinion that you can get. Obviously they're pretty expensive, but is what it is, right? So you've got granola here. Uh, now the great thing about this stuff, uh, any of my fellow veterans out there will know, you put a little water in this stuff and it is amazing. Uh, you don't need to boil it or anything so this one is very versatile in that factor and then this one is the mexican style adobe i've actually never had this one uh, so you do have to have boiling water for this which is i need to get a jet boil uh, i'm lacking on that a bunch of my friends have gotten them i have not jumped the gun on that one yet i got on that train so but yeah having some food like that basic snacks you know something like that it's good to keep your energy up when you're up and out uh, in the outdoors, you don't want to be out there with a calorie deficit and losing all your energy, feeling weak. That's how you get sloppy. That's how mistakes happen. Also, having a way to boil it. Uh, this is just a little scent. I haven't even used this yet. Just found this in uh, my gear closet. But something like this, don't just get a plain one. Get something that you can, oh, if you put it over the fire, boom, I can take it off, right? Because you don't want to burn your hands or use a glove and get your hands caught on fire. This goes without saying, but having some form of cordage, um, I'm running pretty low on paracord right now. I'm actually glad that I just realized that I could go pick some more up, but 550 paracord, most times it's not a bug out scenario. So I like high vis stuff. Uh, that way if, you know, God forbid I were to get injured and I have to get held up for a few days in a certain place using like this, that reflective tent, having the ability to, uh, a standout environment if rescuers come and look for me that's very important uh, any paracord you get is about the same from bass pro walmart you name it just get some basic 550 as long as it says 550 pair of a military cord you're good to go now this stuff has so many different uses i'll have to make a separate video just going over some of them but uh, do not underestimate the power of light uh, especially in low light environments if this ends up being an overnight trek that i'm doing you know, get lost, get turned around, whatever. Anything can happen. It's better to have it, not need it. Uh, one of my favorite things to carry is this Streamlight MicroStream. It's been my EDC light for about six months now. Definitely no complaints there. There's a full video on this if you guys want to go check. A couple little other odds and ends that I like to carry in my day pack. A pair of mechanics gloves if I'm doing woodworking, if I need to go get some kindling, uh, whatever it is. If I need to, you know, get a nasty old tree and put my hammock up in there by another's like black widow season and all that other crazy stuff having a pair of mechanics gloves just in general to do uh, basic utility work is definitely a good thing to have they're like pretty inexpensive uh, electrical tape from fixing boo-boos to just you know keeping crap together on your pack definitely is a very valuable thing to have i like carrying two rolls uh, i got some red and some black color doesn't really matter just having it on you, I think. Better to have it and not need it, right? And the last thing, again, for an overnight trek, uh, 
chem lights or uh, you know, glow sticks, whatever you want to call them. I just carry a few of them with me. So that way, if it's dark and I have to, you know, set up camp for the night, I can put these, you know, every so often in my camp. That way, I, if I end up, you know, having to go out for water, or use the restroom or whatever, I can find my way back. Definitely pretty important. I definitely use the ones that last 12 hours. Those are, that's pr a pretty important thing to have on you, I think. One last thing and then I can let you guys go. It can get cold, even in the summertime, especially out here in California, it's the desert, the air is dry. Uh, so not only will I carry this, this is just a basic uh, a poncho liner from Black Rifle Coffee. I love these things, any of my fellow vets will uh, know how amazing these things are. This is like the old Marine Corps frog skin camo, so definitely pretty cool there. Uh, having like a good sw uh, sweater or something warm to keep in your pack as well. If you aren't going to carry one of these, that way if it does get down to the lower temperatures while you're out there, you aren't, you know, shivering and having to look for a fire or make a fire rather. Because uh, in some areas like here, uh, if it's not an ultimate, like a real survival situation, you're not really allowed to build a fire sometimes. But having like a good hoodie and a good beanie, something like that can go a long way and save your life. Something like this, you can pick them up at like Army Navy stores. Oh gosh, I don't know, 40 to 60 bucks, I think. Um, something else, uh, like just a basic uh, wool blanket, you know, something like that. Something you can wrap around, you keep you warm, space blanket, anything like that. I'm not a big fan of the space blanket, it's kind of cheap. You get this you know, one and done. Something like this is gonna last me for my life. Pretty so big. That is my 2023 day pack gear list. Those are some of the essentials I carry. Uh, obviously, sometimes I'll carry other stuff if I'm trying to go out to do a specific thing, uh, like a multi tool uh, or extra, you know, extra clothing, uh, rain gear. It doesn't rain a lot here, but we've had a very wet year, so something like that might be important to keep in mind. I don't know. This is what works for me. Another thing cool about this hatch, real quick before I let you go, the back of it is a hammer too, so if I have to make some. Uh, pegs to hold something down for a tent or whatever you can definitely do that thank you guys so much for watching let me know what you thought down in the comments below is there anything you'd add to the rotation or take out uh, any advice you have for me thank you guys so much for watching